And so I'm, I'm Tom Grohl. I'm an economist by training. And uh, Nicholas is a senior programmer in the Center for Teaching and Learning. So therefore, we kind of teamed up together as a larger team and as a group. And pretty much uh, some of the element that David has been talking about, so we have been working too, with a specific focus, and I'm going to share my screen, is on economics of some challenges that I have been uh, faced and experienced as an instructor was pretty much that um, I was looking for something to help me with um, assignments and practice for students. And I had the idea of adaptive e-learning. I ran through the time of taking the GIE and I like these approaches kind of to have pathways in there. Um, I like the idea in economics classes are large. Uh, feedback is not very often intermediate. Very often there are exams that are high stakes, but there's very little that is slow practice. And so therefore the idea was to come up with some way to utilize um, e-learning ideas. So therefore we came up with a project that we refer to as econ practice. Um, and I'm going to show a little bit and, and show the idea about is what is econ practice, what might be the instructor view, might be the student view, and what we are working on pretty much this year. And some of that actually is what also David described as LMS and LTI integration and dealing with the pastiness of great books. And I'm going to show a little bit of the technical challenges we have been working with and dealing with. So just a, a brief background um, in economics and in very, we have traditional assignments. Very often they are going to linear through a problem. We have a brief introduction. We have some basic problems and goes through. And I experience with my students very often is, given that there is no immediate feedback, they very often struggle quite a bit to get through that. So therefore they may start out with a mistake, the mistake carries over. And at the end of the day, there might not be eight out of 10 points. Like in David's example, there might be just only one out of 10 because the students went off completely on the wrong track in some sense. Uh, very often high frustrations. And the problem is very often is once you practice a wrong strategy that sticks and co correcting this one can be quite difficult. And there's obviously the issue of delayed interventions in this part. So therefore, the idea was then to go with adapted e-learning to have some form of immediate feedback for students, to be able to have targeted reviews and also uh, immediate interventions, to find ways potentially is what are good interventions in the way of correcting mistakes. Is it good to let students uh, redo something? Is it good to review material over videos, over readings? Is this potentially better to tell a student, look, it might be better to come to office hour right at this point. So we need potentially some human interaction here right now. Um, also good ideas potentially is that students may differ. So we may wanna take them on different pathways to challenge them, but we also don't wanna beat up students. So therefore having different kind of progress ways in there and thinking about, as David also highlighted, test banks. And uh, the possibility to design these various pathways, to think about this, what might be good interventions on which way to take them, or potentially is to think about is to reattempt and all these elements right there. And obviously a big part there is going to be is how to monitor these activities. So we have potentially in my class, I have between 220 to 280 students meaning is there are quite some submissions, different paths are possible. So potentially is how can we adapt in some sense? So how do we let students receive immediate feedback, how to potentially tailor feedback and how to work with this one. And pretty much the idea is there is instead of going linearly through a pro, uh, uh, to, a, to a process where students may potentially go here on the orange path where everything is going to be correct, that potentially there might be a mistake happening. And then the question is going to be is if the basic problem is not correctly addressed, how can we potentially provide a review or some form of feedback? How can we think about reattempts or alternatives to bring them back to be on the path? Or if a student goes through and uh, solves all the basic problems, straightforward intermediate problems, why not potentially uh, create extra advanced problems and take the student and pretty much here on the last step on a different path to challenge the student in some sense. So therefore the idea is going to be is how to use last responses and the history of responses to potentially have these kind of pathways. So there are lots of um, benefits of adaptive e-learning. One that is also clear is it's not a substitute um, to other forms of instruction. It's very often just complementary. So therefore it's going to be as how to integrate this one. Um, better is also targeted discussions because we know a bit more about the students regarding is where is the student potential regarding background and preparation. Um, analytics help. 
We can have faster interventions. Uh, targeted assignments can also avoid frustrations uh, regarding also the tails of the distribution. And we're going to have also less grading burden if you can think about paper assignments and therefore more contact time for students. So now as a starting point, uh, we were looking around and there's obviously commercial software out there. And uh, two broad elements of software is what we have experienced that's either textbook publishers are going to provide online practice assignments pretty much as a third party, like Aplia and my econ lab specifically in economics, but they're tied to textbooks. Meaning as, as an instructor, I have to commit to the textbook in order to have these kind of tools and accessibility. There is an adaptive learning platform out there, Spartsboro, but they just recently got bought by Cengage, meaning as the fees are just going to go up and there's a cost issue very much. And the very often the question is going to be is who's going to pay for that and you're going to have less control. The alternative is obviously what we all have is our learning management software. And depending on our campus, it might be Canvas, Blackboard, Moodle, and so on. So meaning is as an instructor, I gain control, but very often there is this limitation of what can I import and export and specifically regarding the functionality of uh, the gradebook. And what is also reality is that I don't want to lose my content if the university decides to change the learning management software. So meaning is whatever is potentially in the learning management software is difficult to export into a different platform. And I'm going to be potentially frustrated of losing that. Um, so this is going to be something uh, we'll be having, keeping in mind. So therefore, we were pretty much starting to build um, a, a platform that we refer to as econ uh, practice. And as econ practice, the bigger picture is pretty much just to solve some of these challenges that I have described. We want to have control for instructors to bring their own content, but to get the same tools. We would like to uh, resolve the cost issue as much as possible, meaning as we would like to have an open source and open access. And we would like to have the ability to have a, a course a management system for instructors to keep their application stored that is independent of the learning management software. And we want to have an LTI integration pretty much to use the advantages of the gradebook, which means usually is an issue regarding student data and privacy concerns that we may have if you're going to have um, uh, students working on these things. So therefore, um, there's a focus on economics. We were pretty much looking for something as how can we create economic illustrations like demand and supply diagrams, constraint optimization, and potentially not in the most mathematical form. That's also going to be as um, if students are potentially at the undergraduate level, the mathematics is going to be a little bit different. We want to have it quite interactive. And Nick will talk about a bit later about uh, how we came up or why we chose uh, JSX graphs and how we potentially can embed JSX graphs into our platform, but also then what we are creating with this into various websites over iframes, for example. The next one is we want to create um, assignments, practice assignments. Um, that we can keep on our platform or embed into a learning management software. Uh, we want to use obviously potentially the quizzes or assignments. Uh, with quizzes, I can I will show you in a second how this looks like. We're working also thinking regarding more about the LTI. And we want to obviously have provide verbal feedback and assign scores. And we want to work with a great book. So, and obviously we want to be independent. So therefore I'm going to switch now the view and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how this looks like our econ uh, practice platform, pretty much uh, from an instructor perspective. So I, I logged in into my portfolio pretty much. And you can see that I have here um, the econ practice, our, our usual branding, what people want. And then here's going to be a collection of my courses. Some of these courses are going to be shared with students. Some of them are going to be for me in the background where I'm going to create illustrations that I'm going to embed into the learning management software and share them therefore there. And therefore I'm going to have here pretty much a repository. I can create a new course as an instructor, but suppose I'm going to take one of my existing courses. And actually this is the one that we are working on. I wanted to share this one here. Sorry. So therefore you can see here a portfolio of graphs that are featured, meaning is they're going to be specifically on the highlight. And I have various topics uh, like chapters in a book where I'm going to have these interactive illustrations. I can edit my course. I can clone the course if I go from spring 
for example, into the fall semester and I want to have a separate course, I can do that. I can manage my featured graphs that are going to be listed here. I can manage the topics, but I can obviously create new graphs. And these illustrations, and now we're going to probably see where JSX is going to come in, is where we're creating here pretty much prototypes, different style of traditional classical illustrations, very similar to a library using JSX and pretty much with economic content. And you can see already some of the features. We have diagrams that highlight areas. Uh, we have multiple curves. We have interactions across diagrams. Um, we have constraint optimization problems and all these elements. So therefore, I can pretty much create here a diagram and I can give it a title. I can give it a summary of what this diagram is. I can give students instructions what to do with them. We have here the sliders that students can work with, and we can also shift the curves around as standard. And we can classify, so this is going to be a template. This is a labeling assignment. This is a modification assignment where students have to do a task. This is a practice assessment or an LTI assessment going into a learning management software. I can assign a topic. And I also have here a feedback assessment editor. And the assessment editor is coming in based on the students' responses. I can give feedback in the visual uh, illustration. And we pretty much have here our assessment documentation. And here on the Django side is what happens if a curve is going to be changed. And you can see that instead of using coding, we're using J Django pretty much as an interface and pretty much create here um, the feedback that can be verbal or it can be a score. And that score is probably then our way with an LTI integration into the gradebook. And that's going to be what we have there. So now once I have created these graphs that I pretty much have here in various forms, that's going to be all instructor perspective. I can use here, for example, I can share the entire assignment as a visual or I can use it as an iframe. And this iframe I can embed pretty much anywhere. And so for example, one way is to use, this is going to be a view of Canvas, like a learning management software. And I'm using the standard quiz tool that they have, but I can embed into any question pretty much, and let me make this a bit larger, embed the graph that students can use, and they can answer questions with a multiple choice. This is a direct way, pretty much one way into the gradebook over the quiz function, where we're just going to pretty much use the graphing one over an iframe to do the visualization. Obviously it has some spacing issues. That's a disadvantage if you're going to embed this way, or we're going to work here pretty much with assignments. So that's going to be pretty much how it looks like from an instructor perspective um, to work with. Um, students obviously can also uh, use our um, tool and they pretty much can review interactive illustrations on the course material. They can either practice on the platform or on the course's uh, learning management software. They can create their own illustrations and they can also export their work. For example, if they have submitted something, they can save it for their lecture notes and so on. And from a student perspective, the platform pretty much is going to look like this. I'm going to switch over into a different browser view. Um, and I think you could see it now. I see my featured graphs for my course. What is shared with me, I can see the various topics. And I pretty much have here the discussion where there are instructions and descriptions in there. And I can pretty much here work with a diagram in various ways and see what is happening. I can reset, I can export and work with this one right there if it's not to me shared in the learning management software. Um, the course for the student is going to be open. It's pretty much the access is controlled by the instructor. So we have various ones right here. I can also use templates, meaning is with a template right here. I can create all the labels by myself. I can work with this one, meaning is I don't need any coding and I can do this by myself. And export this one again as an SVG. If I don't want to use pencil and paper, traditionally, we can do this too. So therefore, we give an editing uh, ability pretty much to students to work with these diagrams uh, that we have prepared. And they can export them and pretty much give a students a form of ownership about this one. So now I'm going to hand over to Nick, who will talk a little bit more about the illustrations and how we came up with JSX graphs on the advantages. Yeah, so Econ Practice is this tool that we um, initially designed and developed in 2015. And um, yeah, 
uh, back then, we um, right, we just found JSX Graph to be the most flexible tool to do everything we needed to do. And the way econ practice is built on the technical side, we we have JSX Graph as sort of the focus, surrounded by a React application on the front end, and um, and every the state of the graph is all recorded via Django on the back end to a database, and which allows the instructor to save the state of the graph, uh, choose graph types, etc. We have eight uh, or eleven or so different graph types, which are all defined by this um, long JavaScript file, which with instructions on how to render each one based on the um, uh, metadata that we've stored in the database. Um, let's see. Now, in addition, right, there's there's many interactive features here which are customizable to the instructor. All that is defined, um, yeah, in code just with toggles turning turning on or off features like whether to show the the um, shadow view or, in other words, the the original graph state to the student as they move things around, or just to hide that and give the students their own sandbox to play with. Um, and the sandbox aspect is sort of a key thing of of how we thought of this tool. We um, we want to make general use cases for instructors to uh, to, uh, to illustrate all sorts of economics phenomena, whether that's micro or macro economics. Um, we don't want we want this to make we want to make this as domain uh, general as possible. Um, and so let's see, we can go to the next slide here. Utilizing econ practice. Right. So this is uh, the intention here was that this is an open source, open access tool. Um, we use LTI in order to work with various uh, LMSs. At the moment, we work with Canvas, but um, it's you know in the realm of possibility if another econ professor wants to run this on their campus using Moodle or something, that's absolutely a possibility. With the caveat that that instructor would need uh, technical people slash possibly even a development team if they want to be able to address bugs on their own. But you know the possibility is there if if you have your own technical people or if the you know the instructor themselves is technical enough to to get this running themselves. Um, uh, we have, um, right, we have an assessment editor. Um, the next steps here, um, I guess I will pass it back to Tom because we have big plans to uh, build in much more features actually this semester to econ practice. So, so yeah, I will let you take it, Tom. Yeah, so um, we, we made the following experience when we, when we build um, econ practice. We had the LTI in mind uh, immediately, and Nick had built already, as I had shown, his assessment editor to provide uh, verbal feedback and scoring. The problem was that when we were using, for example, Canvas, we could only embed it or build it in, integrate it as a so-called external tool. And as a consequence, every single graph that we were bringing in was an external tool and we couldn't do it over the Chris function. Uh, we could only do it over the assignment function. And as a consequence, um, Every graph, meaning one assignment, meaning it's one gradebook entry, was pretty much creating a huge mess in the gradebook, meaning it's the gradebook just blew up the entire time. There was no way that we could combine that. So now what we want to do is to, to resolve that issue, we want to make it a little bit more independent. And we are working right now on a so-called assignment builder where the instructor can combine multiple illustrations, our JSX illustrations pretty much is, and uh, provide instructions for each of them and pretty much define in which way these graphs should be presented. And we want to have it as a full integration, similar to uh, what David presented, is a full integration into the learning management software, LTI, where we pretty much then can be able to use student data and the gradebook to resolve that issue. Right now, econ practice, even if people would like to you get access to our econ practice that is on Columbia service, we don't want student data. Um, so as a consequence right now, everything is driven regarding instructors and courses and students would receive the link to the course and a password created by the instructor, but we don't store any student data. We don't want that. But obviously we would like to have student data regarding grading. So that's going to be the next part where we're building assignments of how to collect um, these illustrations, 
how to get access to the great book to have a combined score in some sense. And we're also going to work on adaptive uh, pathways of how we're going to design in which order uh, illustrations are going to be pretty much uh, presented based on their last response or the past the history of responses if you're going to think about this uh, students who are browsing through or, or breezing through an assignment that we want to identify and we would like to look, build the analytics that's a part right there there we obviously have to think about student data versus user data potentially so we are fine with working with anonymous uh, data that are coming from in quotes off campus we are fine to work with our student data from a sensitivity part but that's what we want to do and with these analytics you would like to understand is what might be using it pretty much also for, for research purposes, what might be best practices for interventions in these kind of assignments. Once you're going to have these toolkits, uh, should we give hints, should we provide videos, text review, or should we invite students to office hours? And that's pretty much um, where we are working on this one. So an assignment builder collects this one, we want to define adaptive pathways, and we want to actually learn from these experiences too. And then here is the technical uh, side pretty much is on the documentation. As Nick said, it's an open source tool. Um, we also have been given access to instructors at other campuses if they were co uh, comfortable. Um, it's going to be on a Columbia server and they're not going to have the student data. But again, the next part is also that people can use it. And there is the, the GitHub where everything is in. It's supported on devices and browsers. We have also in the team of the Center for Teaching and Learning, uh, specifically an eye on accessibility um, that we have been working on too, um, as this is going to be a growing uh, need. And everything has been so far built uh, with open source software, um, Django on the back end and JSX graph. So that's going to be um, our work pretty much in connection to JSX graph. And I'm going to stop sharing. <laughs>